In this video, we're going to be using Taylor's inequality to help us prove, um, for two different examples, that the function is equal to um, its Taylor series. So just recall that um, our Taylor's inequality says that if the n plus 1th derivative at x um, in absolute value is less than or equal to m for x minus a less than or equal to d, so that means an interval around um, a, then the absolute value of the remainder is bounded by m times x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, again for x minus a less than or equal to d, so in this interval around the center. Okay. So here we're trying to prove f of x is equal to its Maclaurin series. Um, Maclaurin series is the Taylor series centered at 0, so here we have a is equal to 0. So the first thing that I want to do is figure out my n plus 1th derivative. Okay. Now notice that if my function here is f of, um, excuse me, f of x is equal to e to the x, the derivative of e to the x is always e to the x, so my n plus 1th derivative is just e to the x. So this is e to the x for all n. Okay, so let's suppose that whoops, our um, absolute value of x here is less than or equal to d. This means x is between negative d and d. So if we think about our function here, y equals e to the x, okay? If x is between negative d and d, okay, we just have this interval where I can go out um, some finite distance here away from the center. So let's suppose that's true. Okay, What can I say about a bound here on my derivative? Well, I can say that the absolute value of the n plus 1's derivative of x is equal to the absolute value of e to the x e to the x is always positive, so I can just say that's e to the x. So this comes down to finding a bound on e to the x when x is in this interval from negative d to d. Okay, well if I can go um, here all the way up to whatever this positive d is here, the biggest that the function can be on that interval is e to whatever that x value d is. So I can say that e to the x is always going to be less than or equal to e to the d on this interval where x is between negative d and d. Okay, So in this case I can use this thing here as my m. Okay, So what can I say by Taylor's inequality? Okay, we can say that this means that the bound on our remainder, okay, and our remainder and absolute value must, of course, be greater than or equal to zero because we have this absolute value. This is going to be less than or equal to this e to the d times the absolute value of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so we want to show Remember, our goal is to show that the remainder is going to zero here. If I have this, this inequality, um, what I can then do to show that the remainder goes to zero is show that this upper bound goes to zero because then by the squeeze theorem that um, remainder would have to go to zero. So notice that the limit as n goes to infinity of e to the d times the absolute value of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial is going to have to be equal to zero. e to the d is a finite number. Okay, remember that useful fact that we had before, since the limit as n goes to infinity of x to the n over n factorial equals 0 here for all x, and um, as n grows here, this x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial will also be 0. Okay, so I'm going to have 0 times this finite number, and that will be equal to 0. So our limit as n goes to infinity of our n of x and absolute value would have to be equal to zero by the squeeze theorem. Okay, so of course that means the limit as n goes to infinity of our n of x is 
excuse me, zero. Okay. And since I did this for just sort of an arbitrary number D here, you could make D as big as you wanted, and this would still always be true. So that means that we can um, show that the remainder will be going to zero for any X um, along the number line, because you can make D as um, large as you want. So for any X, okay, you'll have, you can create an interval that X is in that interval, and the remainder will be going to zero um, over that interval. Okay, so we can say that this remainder going to zero then means, okay, by the theorem that we had earlier, that our function is actually equal to its Taylor series. So e to the x is actually equal to this sum from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial for all x. Okay, so that's um, an example of, of how we could use Taylor's inequality to actually prove a function equals its Taylor series. So let's look at one more example, because how we go about finding m in different examples will be slightly different. Okay, so we'll look at this one here for um, cosine of x. We want to prove that cosine of x equals its Taylor series centered at pi for all x. So notice these are the two examples where we already found the Taylor series. Now we're trying to show that the function is equal to its Taylor series. Okay, so again, to remind ourselves what Taylor's inequality is saying, this is saying if the n plus one -th derivative at x is less than or equal to m in a certain interval around the center, then the remainder is going to be bounded by that m times x minus a to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so our function here is f of x, that's cosine x. I want to say something about a bound on the n plus 1th derivative, so let's just look at our first couple of derivatives. Remember the first derivative here would be negative sine x, the second derivative negative cosine x, the third derivative would be positive sine x, the fourth derivative would be cosine x, and then I'd cycle through this again. The fifth derivative would end up being negative sine x, etc. here. Okay. So the n plus 1th derivative will either be cosine, negative cosine, sine, or negative sine, depending on what n is. Okay, so we can say that, notice that, um, let's see, so we can say the n plus 1th derivative here, oops, the n plus 1th derivative will either be plus or minus sine, or plus or minus cosine. So I want to think about um, no matter which of those four uh, derivatives I have, what, what would the bound look like? Well, remember that cosine is bounded in absolute value by 1, and sine is bounded in absolute value by 1. Okay? So this is true. Um, let's see, both of those things are less than or equal to 1 for all x, okay? So we can say that the n plus 1th derivative of our function in this case here will always be less than or equal to 1, okay? Because notice what we had over here, we said the n plus 1th one, n plus one derivative is either going to be negative or positive sine, negative or positive cosine, but no matter what, those are always bounded by 1, okay? So we can use 1 for our m value, okay? Then we can say that our absolute value of our n of x is less than or equal to 1 times x minus pi, our a is pi, um, to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, okay? And we can see then that the limit as n goes to infinity of this 1 times x minus pi to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial will be equal to 0. Again, I have some kind of number here raised to the an n power. This is the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. So I know anything that's a limit as n goes to infinity of x to the n <coughs> over um, n factorial is going to be 0.
Okay. So our limit as n goes to infinity of our remainder here is also zero. Okay, so that proves that cosine of x equals its Taylor series, okay, at pi, which is what we were interested in showing in this case. So if we go back to what we found for our Taylor series for cosine um, at pi, centered at pi, we can say that cosine of x equals the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2n factorial times x minus pi to the 2n, and that that's equal for all x. Everything that we showed in terms of our proof here, okay, this inequality is true for all x. So we have cosine equals this Taylor, its Taylor series for all x, which is over the whole interval of convergence. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions on this.